Welcome to this episode of the Lou Vudo Podcast here on YouTube. This episode, I talk with a special friend, someone I got to know uh, while I was doing the show in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. She also had a show there for a good number of years. And I'm talking about the very talented, my friend Louise Mandrell. So stay tuned for this episode. I know you're going to enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, Louise Mandrell. Well, welcome to this edition of the Lou Vudo podcast on YouTube, and I have a wonderful guest today. I know you guys are going to really enjoy. Uh, my guest today is a successful performer, recording artist, actress, and TV star. Some of her recordings were in the top 100 of the country music charts over the years, as well as the top 50, the top 40, top 20 and songs like Reunited, number 13, and I Want to Say Yes in the top five. Uh, she's appeared on the Mike Douglas Show, the Today Show, Hollywood Squares, Austin City Limits, Hee Haw, the Tonight Show, and Family Feud, just to name a few. There's actually a whole list on, uh, on the internet of you know, what she's appeared on, but she's one of the kindest people that I've ever met and my friend Louise Mandrell. So welcome, Louise, and thank you for being <laughs> thank here. Thank you. It's good to be with you, and um, we miss seeing you. You are such a great performer on Pinchot Forge, and I always love seeing you work. Oh, yeah, we used to see each other quite a bit. I, you know, we would visit each other's theater, and um, so yeah, we got we got to see each other quite often, but now you're in Nashville. I'm in Ohio. So that's a little further apart. But uh but no, it's great to have yes, you. Now, well thank you. I I have enjoyed all the wonderful things I've had a chance to do as a performer, but uh, as I've gotten older, I started picking and choosing certain projects so I don't get out as much as I used to. Now I have all this <laughs> to take care of, and wow. and I yes I love it. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, so I uh, and I did a little research because I uh, I wanted to kind of be a little more prepared and found learn some things that I didn't know. Not, one was that you were born in Corpus Christi, Texas. Is that right, you and yes, your sisters? Yes, my dad was a police officer there, and Ernie was born there. Barbara was born in Houston. Okay. And then we uh, left this and went to California. Right, right. And so your sisters, obviously, Barbara and Erlene, and you're the middle child, which you used to joke about quite a bit in the show, in, in Pigeon Forge. <laughs> yes, yes. I think I'm a little bit of like each one of them but they're really different from one another. So I, I definitely am the typical middle child. Although, unlike middle children, I really like being a middle child. Oh, is that right? <laughs> sure, because I have a big sister, like, like I told you before, a big sister takes care of me, a little sister I can boss around, what's better than that? <laughs> 
right? And it was uh, it was wonderful. Well, I got to meet Erlene one time she visited. I didn't get to meet Barbara, but they both visited at different times when you were in Pigeon Forge. So Well, I stayed pretty busy. If they wanted to see their sister, they had to come to Pigeon Forge. And, <laughs> and I, I did love it there. It did. Yeah, you were doing... I think Go ahead. Yes, when I, when I had a birthday party once, I remember Barbara and Ernie were both there. And they brought out this big, huge birthday cake and Barbara started singing Happy Birthday. Well, she's been retired and no one's heard her sing in a long time. So the audience did not sing along. Everybody stopped oh. singing when Barbara started because they wanted to hear her sing. Right. I thought, wow, that, that just really touched my heart. She oh. is missed. And, and, uh, what an incredible performance she was. Yeah. Well, all of you, all three of you are so, so, so talented. I was actually, and of course, again, I got to see this whenever I seen your show, but you play several instruments. I mean, I think there's seven or, or maybe more that of instruments you play. And I think both Barbara and Erlene play several instruments as well. Well, we started out as musicians and it was just, I know it was unusual back then in the olden days <laughs> for women to be uh, musicians, but daddy always told us we could do whatever we wanted. And so we decided that's what we wanted. He believed in us and was an incredible manager. And he got, he got you guys started, right? Your dad. Uh, well, he started, actually it all started with Barbara and my mom and my dad and two other musicians in a band called the Mandrell Family Band. And they toured most of the military bases. And then later, uh, Erlene and I turned to each other and said, you know, they say they're going to retire soon, but we knew better. So we got busy, started taking music lessons and, and started learning instruments. And well, went into the family business. Yeah. Yeah, I just remember being so um, enthralled at the show when you would, there was a number where you would kind of go over here and play this and play the bass and then go to the <laughs> drums. And then that was really awesome. the whole show was awesome and just well thank you i think that my uh, my favorite instrument and even i had it loud in the monitors in my ears so to sing to was bass guitar but the audience loved it best when i played fiddle so i always had to do that but i i really enjoyed entertaining because i love people and the curtain would open and i had to get just as excited as they did for a show to start. I was excited just to look out there and see so many people that cared enough to be there and ready to have a good time. Right. Well, and I, you know, I mean, I could always tell 
and I'm sure it was very as evident to the rest of the audience. You know, you can tell when someone enjoys what they're doing and, and then when they're not enjoying what they're doing, you know, so, but that was very evident. And, I know you can, and you can relate to that because you've been on stage so many times and, yeah. and you're a great performer. So I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. We kind of feed off the audience. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I've actually, um, I've thought about this before about, you always kind of feel like you always give 110%, but there's just something about being in front of an audience that's really into it, you know, in course, you know, so. <laughs> that's true. I, I know that there are a lot of entertainers that just do it because they love their music, but I really love people and the music was a bonus. Uh, the people were why I enjoy doing it. Yeah, yeah. Which, which uh, worked out in my family because you know we we signed autographs after the shows and, and we have a chance to visit and many times because uh, being known as Christians, uh, we have people come through the line just with a prayer request, which brings us to another thing I was doing at the Theater East Tennessee when. You and I were both there, and that is a praise and worship service on Sunday mornings. That was so incredible. Yes. I would announce at my shows that we were going to have church, and then there would be this huge, long line of people uh, at my door <laughs> to greet. And, of course, the older gentlemen would come through, bring their wives, say hello, set their wives down, and go through the line again. <laughs> <laughs> so I felt very special. Yeah. Well, and you were so gracious. You invited me to sing one time at the at your Sunday morning service, and that was certainly an honor. Well, well thank you, thank you for doing it. The, it's uh, it was an unusual church situation because there were so many people who come to East Tennessee, and of course, uh, some of them came because they wanted to go to church on Sunday and they didn't have a church. And it was a casual service as far as dress. And, and it was uh, another reason is that a lot of people had quit going to church and they were curious about it. So we felt like it was serving a need that, that and God had put it on our hearts to do it. Yeah, yeah that was awesome. I really enjoyed being there. Um, so, by the way, you, um, I wanted to mention your family. You, you and John have been married for how long? I, didn't, I don't even know. Forever. Forever. <laughs> <laughs> and as I know, you have a beautiful daughter and now a beautiful granddaughter. Do they live in Nashville? Yes, my granddaughter. Is, yes, everybody lives in National City, this little town where, where you know, as far as my daughter and grandchild and my best friend and all my friends that came from East Tennessee that worked for me, we all moved to Asheville City. And so we're enjoying this, this special little city that we've made our own. Yeah. And my little granddaughter loves it here so much. And I have been at the typical grandmother. I love spoiling her. I love taking care of her. And this last year with the pandemic, she did virtual school from here at the house. So she was here a lot, but occasionally her parents would come get her. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> they get off work, they think they want her back. They get off work, they come get her. I think that's wrong. She's perfectly happy here. <laughs> you know, I do think it's amazing how parents trust their kids to raise their grandkids. That, I mean, that says a lot. What's the matter back there? What are you doing back there? You're snoring, are you? <laughs> oh, my babies. I just, I love animals. I have two cats. They're not with us right now. They, I don't, they're probably out hunting. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> but I do have my three little puppies here. And what's their name? This is Zeus that I got from California. And uh, I met Zeus when I was staying with the director and I convinced the director that Zeus did not need to live in the desert as an outdoor dog, even if he did have a swimming pool. 
Instead, he needed to come home with me and be an indoor dog. And I said, if you'll just let him come home with me, I know he loves his pool, but I'll build him a pool. I'll do whatever it does I have to do to make him happy. And I do spoil him. I cook for him every day. Matter of fact, my husband would come sometimes and smell it and say, can I have some dog food? <laughs> and I, I always cook for them. You can tell I overfeed. Yeah. Uh, this is Bobby, hair, Chinese crescent. She's hairless. She hates the camera. And this is tell. Phoebe. I babysit Phoebe every day. And just like my grandchild, Phoebe's mom comes to get her every night after work. Oh, nice. And by the way, speaking about friends, you said, I, I would think most of them you mentioned moved to uh, Nashville, but now you worked quite a few years with Pedro Tomas. Is he? He's uh, still yes. I still stay in contact with Pedro. And he works at UT. He's a professor and he is, he's always been good at everything he's ever done. I, I was not surprised or shocked when he started teaching. He's just incredibly smart and talented and one of my closest friends. And yeah. I'm just so happy that he has found this all new life. I mean, it's, it's been great. Well, and he was such a key part of the show there in Pigeon Forge. Well, and then you had worked with him previous to, to Pigeon Forge, I know, but he was, uh, as you say, such a great talented dancer and singer and he was such a key part of the show yes yes absolutely um i felt very blessed to have him in our show and a lot of people because we did so many romantic numbers together always wanted to know if we were married <laughs> and if we were not married he is like a brother to me and uh i i know he's he is very, very happily married now to Roger, who is in charge of wardrobe. And yes. I, they, they are a really sweet couple. Uh, and what a nice guy. I mean, I've talked to him several times and had seen him around town and a very kind man. So Yes, absolutely. And he loves people. And that was obvious. And, you know, you have a lot of performers that are talented, great singers or great musicians or great dancers. But when you meet a performer that just feeds off an audience, there's, it's just totally different. Wow. Uh, the audience feels that you can't lie to an audience. They see it. Absolutely see it. Yeah. I agree. I, matter of fact, an example in these types of conversations with maybe other entertainers that I always think of what a great, great singer Frank Sinatra was. And he was, I mean, unmatched as far as his ability and talent in singing. But when I compared him to Dean Martin, Dean Martin had a more of a long suit entertaining people. He, he had a great voice, but he was, I think, a little more of an entertainer. And, uh, and that always made a difference to me. I enjoyed them both, and I think they both were great. But and of course, I always say I was born too late because I, I really was into a lot of singers and performers that were before my time, uh, like in that case. But. Well, my, my now manager, uh, who also manages Kitty Chesney and a lot of other really big acts, Clint Hyam, he told me this same thing. He said, I know you wished you were born in the 40s because that's the music you loved. Uh, but... Uh, there was no hiding. I had to put some forties in my show, and I love the big band, even in country music. I, mean, I had a huge band in Pigeon Forge. Nine-piece band with, uh, uh, you know, all the dancers I had. I love production, but in the forties. They like production, and, and I'm always in awe of that. Still love watching the old movies and, and watching the dancers, the endless amount of dancers and huge orchestras. It was wonderful. Yeah. Well, that, that, of course, always stood out whenever I watched the show. The other thing that I wanted to bring up that really 
impress me because I think we feel very similar uh, about our military, about the U.S. military, and you always had a special part in the show where you honored the military, and that was always so wonderful. And I guess your well, dad was you. in the military, right? <clears throat> yes, he was in the Navy, a uh, big influence in, in my life. And of course we entertained the military for so many years. And I was having what we call a guitar pool, which doesn't happen often in our family because we're always performing. So when we finally get together, we want to talk. But we had some friends and that were really into music. And Daddy brought out the guitar, and pretty soon everyone's playing music. And it was a childhood friend, Clinton Johns. And Clinton stopped in the middle of a song, and he said, do you know your dad saved my life? And, of course, we thought, he's pretty funny, so was my dad. This was going to be a joke. But it wasn't a joke. My uh, dad was on a ship that uh, was bombed, and and they thought that um, the ship was going down because it was on fire. It did not sink, but people were jumping off the ship to try to get to safety. And some people were being lowered in boats. My dad was in one of the boats that was lowered, and he was pulling people out of the water because it was so cold. And they were, between that and, of course, always worried about sharks in the middle of the ocean. So then no one could see. It was pitch black that night and no one could see. And the next morning, daddy turned and the, this man that he had just pulled out of the water that night was his childhood friend. It was Clinton who stopped the music to tell us, your dad pulled me to safety. And I, you know, my dad never talked about his time in the Navy. He was a pharmacist mate. And there's so many endless stories I've heard about daddy, but it all, it all came from other people. And it, I think a lot of our military personnel is that way. They feel so much a family, they don't want to be singled out. Yeah. Well, and then, of course, your love for your dad and, and the military was so evident in the show because that was such a great talk about a production number. That was such a wonderful honor to the military <laughs> thank, you. thank you and i do love our military and of course i did not single daddy out because he was in the navy i i the military tribute was to all military and men and women who have served and were still serving and i loved it when i would ask the veterans to stand because it was a chance to say thank you and it's one thing to do it as a tr musical tribute. It's another thing to stop long enough to say thank you. And I try to encourage people that when you see someone in uniform, just say thank you. It, it just only takes a second to make someone feel appreciated. Yeah. And, and they did appreciate that so much. And I'm sure you heard, like, we had a not as big a, a military production number, but afterwards we would get thanked all the time. Thank you for honoring us. Thank you. And they were so appreciative, you know, of that, you know. Well, we, uh, we are blessed to be in a free country and to have a military that is as strong as ours. Yeah. Amen. I agree. Now, of course, I want to, I also wanted to mention the first time that I was aware of you and Barbara and Arlene was the, you guys, when you did that TV show in the early, I think it was the early eighties, wasn't it? That yes, was just, was. of course, that was where I have to say that was where my crush on you began. You know, 1980, I thought for so many years, I would love to meet you. And uh, when, when I heard you were coming into town, I was just so excited. Now, kind of a funny story. And I know we, we've talked about this, but so I knew you had arrived and I, I don't know, I think I knew you were rehearsing or something this particular day. And uh, I stopped in to introduce myself and uh, you had actually stopped your rehearsal. And I talked with you, introduced myself and uh, you stopped to give me a tour of the theater, which was so kind of you. But 
we were walking around and people were still working doing last minute, you know, painting and repairs and whatever, whatever else was going on. And as we're walking around, <laughs> a few people would say hi and they go, Oh, hi, Lou. And uh, a couple of them said, how's Nick? Well, I have a son, Nick. And so I jumped and I answered right away. Oh, hi. You know, Nick is doing great. <laughs> so that <laughs> happened two or three times. And then I realized that your daughter's name was Nicole and that they were actually calling you Lou and talking to you. <laughs> and I got pretty embarrassed. Yeah. And I yeah. sheepishly said, oh, they're talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were so kind. And of course, I would stop and give you a tour. You were Elvis and nice looking. What? Who wouldn't stop? Oh, well. So thank you for being so kind. I, I was really proud of the theater and I enjoyed giving you a tour. And again, enjoyed your music so much. Yeah. And as Lou, not just Elvis. Well, thank you. Good, well, good, good, good energy. Thank you. Well, I enjoy it also, and thank you so much. I, and of course, I was one time they asked me speaking about your birthday. You had mentioned another time, but uh, they had asked me to come over and present you with flowers on your birthday and sing. I think I sang a little happy birthday song to you, but. Uh, that was uh, that was kind of fun. I was actually a little worried, though, because they wanted me to stop you in the middle of your show. And I thought, is she going to be OK with that? <laughs> but that was kind of fun. That's so well, I'm OK with anything that, that you bring to the show. You like I said, you have great timing. You're a great entertainer. And you everything you did made me feel very special. Thank you. Well, again, it was great to be able to see each other so often, and we kind of, I miss that as well. But So um, I did want to also mention, um, I had read actually online that you, uh, you and Barbara, and I think Erlene, but you guys work with Merle Haggard. I work with Merle, and I have done concerts with Merle, but my sister Barbara did concerts not in his group, but separate country music artists working together. All right. And I uh, remember recording uh, backup for him on a few songs, which made me really nervous because prior to me, you know, they'd only been Bonnie Owens. So yeah. I, I was a little nervous about it, but uh, he must have liked it because years later he went to record some of the same music again. And when he saw me, he said, what did we do that made you sound so good in that recording? We just couldn't, we couldn't match it. And I said, you could have matched it. You could have asked me <laughs> to come back. Yeah. I didn't know if I was being insulted or complimented at yeah. the time. <laughs> right. But uh, anyway, yes, Merle has a, a, he has a great, you know, he was a great entertainer, great voice. And uh, I did work with him for a while. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get to, and of course, we recently lost a gr another great entertainer, B.J. Thomas. Uh, and he was in town, actually, for a little while. Yeah, he did our TV show, but not as far as working concerts with him. When okay. he was in California, we're doing the TV show. He did our TV show, and I went to see him in concert. Okay. But, and then I stole one of his musicians. But other than that... <laughs> Right, right. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> no, but he was a guest on the show one time. Yeah, yes, he was. And I didn't steal a musician. The musician had quit and I hired him. Oh. But it's a small, small world, and we all just seem to cross paths so many times the musicians, the entertainers. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I just, what an amazing life that I have been able to have. And, and I love getting to share some of it with you. Thank you, Lou. Well, th and thank you so much. Like I said, you've been so kind. I mean, I, I was in town impersonating someone, and I, of course, I did love doing it, but to, uh, to 
be able to get to know someone as talented as you and, and someone who has been on such a big scale, entertaining and, and so well known. And you were so kind and so uh, down to earth, so to speak. I, you know, I just appreciate that. So thank you. And thank you uh, for doing this. Um, it just has been wonderful to have you. And I know people are really going to enjoy this interview. Well, thank you. And I wish I could see you in person, but this is the next best thing, I guess. Yes. Thank you. Well, and I, if I ever get to Nashville, maybe we could grab a cup of coffee or something. I don't know. It'd be great to see you again. <laughs> Come see all my babies. Yeah. <laughs> they have a little bit of energy, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's a little laid back in Right. you know yes well thank you so much Lou I look forward to when you do come for a visit thank you thank you again and thank you for taking the time to visit today and um, uh, hopefully we get to see you soon so God bless you and your family and friends and thank you again thank you Lou Thank you.